Objective accomplished. Briefing commences. Analysis of the reactor site indicates that the collective was preparing to route its power to this location. This site appears to be NASDA Central. Capture it before Nexus and the collective are able to use it. Decoding transmission. Warriors of the Collective, Nexus has given us the power of the machine so that we can destroy all that oppose us. Nexus now asks us to crush the project. Cleanse and destroy. Mission timer activated. I've said this before, but this is one of those stages where it's going to come down to the first few minutes. However, it is very easy to lose in those first few minutes, resulting in Beta 7 being on the top 5 list for hardest stages for most people. I'm going to send in my scrub group to show exactly why. Most of this map is a giant collective base, with only narrow strips around the outer edge not being built up by them. But that's not the real issue. There are two things that combine to make this stage a first few minute nightmare. First is that the reinforcement timer is exceptionally long at 5 minutes, so whatever the first 10 units we ship in are, are going to have to hold out for a long time by themselves. Unit under attack. 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 Mission failed. Second is right here. The Collective have a sensor tower that only just barely cannot see the LZ itself, but anything that comes out of it will start getting pounded by artillery immediately. It's set far enough back from the cliff edge that getting direct fire units to hit it is near impossible. It also has a defensive structure in front of it and a CB tower nearby. This combination restricts our options heavily. We can't bring in a VTOL squad to alpha strike the sensor, it's not the enemy AA that's the problem, it's that we will get rushed by a land force long before the 5 minute reinforcements arrive, which will overrun our LZ, since weapons spent VTOLs aren't known for their defensive ability. We also can't try to be cheeky and send in our artillery squad. Trying to spot with the McSpottoms will just result in a dead McSpottoms, and trying to bring in a truck to build towers for spotting will just result in the enemy CB tower seeing us when we fire, and our McShooters getting rained upon. Going mass trucks is iffy, since we will be getting bombed from minute one, and it's unlikely their structures will be able to silence the artillery and get up forward defenses before the land push arrives. We're not going to be able to surgically remove the problem in the first five minutes. That just leaves us with the option of weathering the storm, and to that end, our strategy relies heavily on one unit, the hero level commander we've been training since mid-alpha. He, and any tank attached to him, will enjoy dramatically reduced incoming damage and enemy accuracy rates, and that increase to our survival is going to be the key until we get in some backup. In other words, this was a really bad parking spot. Christine, next time I'm driving. Mission timer activated. Move the clump away from the LZ and load up two heavy bobs, your commander, three lancers, and four of the new assault gun tanks. I also take a few seconds to rearrange my tanks, as an X-Beta heavy cannon had managed to get brought into the last stage instead of an anvil. This stage isn't really about time management, just survival. Looking back, I could have taken a few minutes to start augmenting my base defenses with the new whirlwind pits and assault gun hardpoints, but I'll get to that in a future video. I hope.
Hey, football, over here. Upon landing, attach your combat units to the commander and move him out of the LZ heading southeast. Assigned to commander. Reinforcements are available. Get your reinforcement load of MBG units started ASAP. Unit under attack. I kind of panicked a bit while looking for the McSpottoms, so I've lifted off with just nine. Group one reporting. And as soon as the first volley of artillery arrives, have the trucks set up a repair bay right here. This position will be out of spotting range of their sensors, so at the very least, they won't be able to bombard this. We're going to want that Lancer Tower down quickly, but that shouldn't be an issue. My command tank is already running from damage, but the other units that had lumbered into range were enough for the task. Those new assault guns ripped it apart. Construction completed. Unit under attack. Group 1 reporting. After the repair bay is done, set up a CB tower. While we don't have any artillery of our own yet, we can at least get a leg up on spotting where theirs are, and if placed properly, the CB tower shouldn't come under fire either. Group 1 reporting. Unit under attack. Unit under attack. Construction completed. Unit under attack. Yes, the Collective have VTOLs this stage, but they are the off-map kind. That's why I didn't bring in my AA. These planes are either kill before firing, or don't bother. The Hero Commander's distribution of survivability is just as meaningful against them as it is against the artillery. Which is advice I wish I had taken myself as I start building a row of AA pits here. That is a mistake. I should have started adding howitzers instead, given what my MBG is about to do. While the Collective would have killed the first few of them almost as fast as I built them, that would have been artillery fire not heading towards my experienced units, and as usual, my cash flow isn't an issue. I realized this mistake and replaced them in just a couple minutes, but I only got away with this, mini oopsie, because of the hero commander. Remind me to send him a fruitcake later. And speaking of what my MBG is doing, the key strike that makes this stage bearable. While the enemy sensor is sitting comfortably behind the cliffside, the CB tower isn't. I'm going to move south and take it out. Once it's down, I can then have my as-of-yet unbuilt artillery start shooting the nearby structures, including that sensor, without fear of counter-bombardment. Unit under attack. Construction complete. Unit under attack. Construction completed. Unit under attack. LC clear. Unit under attack. Construction completed. With the nearby CB tower down, head back to the position southeast of the LZ and let your tanks get any needed healing. The enemy cyborg attack wasn't anything in the face of our new assault guns, but the next wave, including tank killers, will be along shortly and we want to be ready for it. Unit under attack. Unit under attack. Unit under attack. Construction completed. Unit 
under attack. Construction completed. Group one reporting. Under attack. Construction completed. Unit under attack. Set up a sensor around this spot so that the howitzers that have been going up can finally get a bearing on the nearby enemy structures. Depending on exactly how your game has been going, the collective may have been counter battering the stuff you build, but once you start firing at the nearby stuff that no longer has a CB tower handy, they should go back to shooting your tanks instead. If not, keep at it, and you should eventually overwhelm them. Construction completed. Unit under attack. And speaking of artillery, bring in your own group. Construction completed. Unit under attack. Construction completed. Unit under attack. LZ compromised. LZ clear. And success. The enemy sensor is down, so our units at and around the LZ no longer fear random bombardment. The stage may not be over, but the hard part has been endured. And now that I have a breather, time to do some drawing on the minimap. There are only two entrances to the base, one at its north center here, and one at its southeast here. I'm firmly convinced that the southeast option is just a red herring, as if we were to go through the effort of going around the edge of the map to get there, and dealing with the collective defenses along the way, there wouldn't be much of a base left by the time we arrive, and facing all of their defenses en route while getting artillery shelled and VTOL rocketed the whole time just doesn't sound like fun. Also, the North Center just lost a sensor and CB tower, so North Center it is. Unit under attack. 
As usual, the best time to move up is right after dealing with an enemy unit push. Both a cyborg team and a tank squad just fell, so now is the time to swing around the trucks to set up some buildings by the north base entrance, as well as eliminating enemy defenses piecemeal. Unit under attack. Unit under attack. Reporting. Unit under attack. Reinforcements landing. Construction completed. Unit under attack. Reporting. That repair speed upgrade from last stage sure is putting in work now, isn't it? Construction completed. Group two reporting. Unit under attack. Group two reporting. Group two reporting. Assigned to sensor. Construction completed. Group two reporting. Group one reporting. Unit under attack. Group two reporting. Assigned to counter battle. Unit under attack. Group one reporting. Group two reporting. Group one reporting. Unit under attack. Unit under attack. May as well send up another team in the football. I'll grab the AA, all of my remaining heavy bobs, and the mixed bottoms. Unit under attack. Group one reporting. Unit under attack. Group two reporting. 
Sign to filter. One reporting. Unit under attack. Unit under attack. I've been mostly using howitzers from Beta 5 to this point due to their general purpose applications, but you simply cannot underestimate the MLRS artillery's advantage in counter battery duty, so I'll chuck a few up here to finally silence the enemy indirects, and possibly any towers or walls sitting directly in front of them. Unit under attack. 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 Construction completed. Unit under attack. Unit under attack. Group 2 reporting. Assigned to counter battery radar. Construction completed. At this point, it seems like the only thing left is to mop up, but the Collective still have a nasty surprise waiting for us towards the southeast area of the base. Do not decide to try and just end the stage quickly by rushing down there. You'll see in just a bit. Construction completed. Group 1 reporting. Construction completed. Oi. Well, unmanned replacements are en route. Group one reporting. And here's that nasty surprise. I pushed to finish off their factory in order to stop them from making land units. And check this out. A series of tank killer towers. I only just barely entered their range and two of my most tenured Lancer tanks almost got killed for it. That said, the push was successful, with the factory down and the combination of howitzer and ripple rocket counter battery fire that's been going on, the enemy's only real remaining threat is in the air. So after healing back up, I now control the pace of the stage. Group 
One reporting. Unit under attack. Assigned to Commander. Unit under attack. Group 1 reporting. Group 2 reporting. Reporting. Unit under attack. Unit under attack. Group one reporting. I'm putting up the bunkers to try and draw VTOL fire. And I guess that worked? My truck survived at least. Group one reporting. Unit under attack. Group one reporting. Construction completed. Construction completed. Group three reporting. Construction completed. Reporting. Group three reporting. Construction completed. Group two reporting. Construction completed. Group two reporting. Group three reporting. Time for another artillery demonstration. By now, you know what happens if I directly attach artillery to a spotter but it's also the case that any unattached artillery, structure, or unit will fire at anything they are in range of, so long as one of your sensors is within range. 
To this end, the McSpotter isn't just the leader of the artillery team, it can also be used to target for your entire on-map artillery force. It's been able to do this for as long as we've had the sensor researched, but it's only really now that we have artillery that can reach out to dramatic ranges where this ability gets to shine. Construction completed. Construction completed. Construction completed. Group one reporting. Group two reporting. Group one reporting. Group three reporting. Group two reporting. Artifact detected. Construction completed. Group one reporting. Group three reporting. Construction completed. Artifact recovered. Construction completed. Objective captured. The satellite object comes under your control once you've removed the defenses in its immediate area. I actually make a mistake here. I play the stage a lot slower than I need to because I forgot that when I take out the command center, the off-map air raids stop as well as this being one of the stages that continue until you return to the LZ instead of auto-ending when all enemies are gone. Detected. Artifact recovered. Artifact recovered. One reporting. Group one reporting. Construction completed. Group one reporting. 
Major research completed. Group one reporting. Group one reporting. Major research completed. Group one reporting. Under attack. Group one reporting. Major research completed. One reporting. And here comes the latest entry to Warzone Magazine's Top 5 Tanks You're Glad You Aren't In. Structure under attack. Structure under attack. Group 1 reporting. Group 2 reporting. Group 3 reporting. Group 2 reporting. Group 2 reporting. Artifact detected. Assigned to sensor. Group 2 reporting. Major research completed. Group 1 reporting. Research completed. Artifact recovered. Research completed. One reporting.
Unit under attack. Enemy base eradicated. Return to LZ. And we are clear. I'll have the McSpottoms check the corners of the map for oil barrels while I cut away to the research wrap-up. Research completed. Surely a satellite base had something useful for us. Group 1 reporting. Weapon research completed. The high explosive armor piercing bombs. This is one of the VTOL weapons that I absolutely use in my campaigns. You saw how potent it can be when the Collective were hitting us with it in Beta 5, and now we get to do the same. Combined with judicious use of the UAV planes on Wild Weasel missions, these can Alpha Strike a base's key installations to dust in short order. Weapon research completed. Two accuracy upgrades. One for the AA. Weapon research completed. One for the howitzers. Structure research completed. An upgrade to VTOL rearming speed, which will prove useful for heat bombers. Computer research completed. And a research speed upgrade. Strategically speaking, this upgrade isn't that useful, since I end up finishing all my research before a stage ends anyway. Though in multiplayer and skirmish games, choosing when to devote a research facility to this is one of the biggest choices you make. Hello again. Sorry for the unexpected blackout. I had finished off the stage and stopped the recording when I realized something. I now had the tech to make the unit I keep promising Alfred 007. I said a few videos ago that the X-Beta tanks Return had a different LZ. career path lined up for them. That time is now. So let me bring them into the stage, and why not the two anvils too, and then design a new unit. Group 1 reporting. As this is Alfred's unit, I'll replace the unused Sylvester design with it. The Heavy Body VTOL Heap. As requested, I will be naming this the Arnold, as it tends to terminate anything it flies near. And if you really want, you can then imagine it saying, I'll be back, in a heavily accented voice, while it returns for its 17-week rearming period. In fact, let's really make it apparent this is Alfred 007's unit. The damage on this thing is nuts, and it does full damage in its entire blast radius. It's basically a howitzer on steroids. Even has the same sound effect and blast animation. However, it's also almost the slowest possible VTOL design, as it is about the same speed in air that a hover is over land. That will change over time, though. Return to LZ. Group 2 reporting. Group 3 reporting. Group 2 reporting. Now I wait the five minutes for the tanks to arrive, recycle them, and then a few more minutes to rebuild, and snip! Group 1 reporting. Return to LZ. Objective accomplished. 